All right, guys, I am back with a brand new DC update, and I did not think I was going to be able to have the time to do this update today, but I do. Uh, it was a very busy day with my career, and I just was not going to have the time to do anything. But luckily, I had a client um, kind of uh, uh, get too busy, and we couldn't do what was scheduled today. So I've got a minute here to do this update, and boy, did things get loud on social media today. And we're going to look at some stuff. The big news of the day and the one we're going to look at first and then we'll look at the other little bits of news is the fact that Warner Brothers Discovery wants to purchase Paramount. Uh, they want to merge into one, create one major app. And I'm going to talk about why I don't think this is a good idea, but they've been priming for this. But let's take a look at a few things in regards to this. So it says here that David Zaslav met with Paramount Global about the possibility of merging with Warner Brothers Discovery. Now let's see what this means. It means that a merger between Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount would likely result in the eventual consolidation of Max and Paramount Plus streaming services, and it would add big franchises to Warner Brothers Discovery's portfolio, including Star Trek and more. Head to the link in the comments for more on this story. Now, I didn't need to click this. Uh, this comes from Axios and uh, Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount reportedly discussing merger. Now, I'm hoping the government kind of steps in here and stops this, and I'll talk about why. This, at this stage, is going to create a monopoly because then we only have three big studios still existing. We have Disney, we'll have Warner Brothers that owns all of this, and then you'll have Universal. Now, the crazy thing about this is that Universal has, they've talked about in the past how they want all of these companies under their umbrella. So if that ever happens, then we're going to have two companies, Disney and Warner Brothers, or Disney and Universal, and that's it. Now, granted, you would still have all of these different subs subsidiaries, um, but it it, 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 it's, it's a monopoly at that stage, and I hope the government steps in and does not allow this to happen. Now, the reason why it may go through is because this would definitely help Warner Brothers stock. Now, I don't know how they have the money to even do this, but if they did, it would definitely help their portfolio, it would help their stock, and it would stabilize things more for the company. And that would also make it a lot more... Um, yeah, it's going to make it look a lot more pleasing to Universal if they want to purchase them here in the next couple of years. Now, if something like this does happen, it would be at least two years before Universal would be able to pick them up. Because anytime a merger or a sale happens, there's like a 24-month 24, 24 like cooling period once something like that happens so that we don't just have companies buying companies, buying companies, and buying companies, even though that's what they're trying to do. So I'm kind of hoping the government steps in and says this is a monopoly, but it definitely would favor Warner Brothers if they were able to do this. Like I said, it would help them out tremendously. But let's look at some of the other DC news. Now, one of the things before I get to these other slides is, you know, I saw Rebel Moon yesterday, and I'm going to talk more about Rebel Moon in an update tomorrow, as well as a new DC update probably tomorrow, but I am going to see Aquaman tomorrow night. And I will have my review up for that as soon as I get back. But let's take a look at some of these other photos. Real quick, here is a photo from me in the theater. You can see my, my shoe right there in the front. Uh, going to see Rebel Moon yesterday. And I actually won a poster, which is pretty cool. So uh, there, they had a trivia thing, and I was able to answer what the name of the next film was going to be. And I got this. It's a hard foam type poster, which is really cool. And they're only available for that premiere. So these are going to be pretty rare, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I was happy with that. But let's let's take a look at some of this DC stuff here. First up, this is crazy. Aquaman and Lost Kingdom won't have a red carpet premiere nor at an after party. All they're doing for this movie is some fan and press screenings with only Jason Momoa and James Wan attending. Review embargo lifts only on Thursday, which usually they would have lifted by now. That's not a good sign for a film. And it says stay tuned for our review. So these people have probably already seen it. I didn't get tickets, meaning we didn't have any press screenings here at all. And so they're not Disney or uh, not Disney. Warner Brothers is really thrown in the towel on this film. They're just going to let the DCEU die. And if you guys have seen what the last scene is in the film, it's absolutely ridiculous. And if you don't want to hear anything, you could plug your ears for the next 10 seconds. But I've actually seen the video and it shows Orm 
eating a sandwich and then picking up a cockroach and putting it in a sandwich and eating it. That's the last scene we get for the DCEU. How disgusting is that? It shows you what Warner Brothers thinks of the fans. They're, they want to do their own thing. And we're actually going to see just how nasty they're getting and how it's all about them, not about the audience or what people actually want to see. Now, this is pretty crazy. Uh, it says, John Cena gets fans buzzing about a potential cameo in Deadpool 3 as Peacemaker. Oh, heck no. Please do not let this happen. Uh, they're going to turn everything into a joke. Uh, th- this is what I'm afraid of with Warner Brothers. Now, this is pretty crazy. It was about a year ago. The Rock wanted to rebuild the DCU around Superman because he knew that's what the fans wanted. Instead, we get George Clooney Batman, Peacemaker cameos, and Orm eating a cockroach burger. Damn. And th- this was the video. Uh, Dwayne Johnson actually posted the video of Super- you know, of Henry Cavill talking about being back. And he said, we fought for years to bring you back. They always said no. But to Danny Garcia Company and myself, no was not an option. We can't build out our DCU without the world's greatest superhero, and fans will always come first. Welcome home. Wasn't that a great feeling when this happened a year ago? Wasn't it awesome knowing that he was back as Superman, making the rounds, and everything was moving in the right direction? And then they decide to bring in James Gunn and Peter Safran and pull the rug out from all underneath all the fans. And I still say that Warner Brothers should be sued for false advertising with Black Adam because they had him go on the circuit. Even even Henry Cavill announced how they had him go out on the circuit to announce he was back in an effort to sell more tickets to Black Adam. And a lot of people went back. I went back three or four times to help support the company and then only to have them yank him out from underneath us. So that is false advertising. That is deceptive advertising. Now, this is interesting. It says, in China, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom receives a 9.1 score on their their, uh, critic score, which is the equivalent to a cinema score. In other countries, pre-sales seem to be be going significantly higher, indicating good word of mouth on the film. Now, I'm personally hoping the movie's good. I don't think it's going to be good. Hearing about that cockroach, actually seeing the cockroach scene, seeing the scene where Orm gets punched, seeing them on these creatures and acting stupid. The movie looks stupid, okay? I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping it's actually good, but I am not counting on it. Now, they've actually lowered what they expect Aquaman 2 to make over the weekend. Originally, it was going to be about $50 million. They've lowered it. Aquaman 2 is targeting a soft $35 million to $40 million. It's four-day debut, including Monday's Christmas Day, which could make it the latest catastrophe in a terrible year for superhero films. By comparison, The Flash had a three-day, 55 million debut. This is what we can, this is, you could thank Warner Brothers, you could thank thank Zaslov, you could thank James Gunn for this. They're all involved in this. They're all complicit. And it's crazy that they've let this die this way. And they're going to say, well, it was dying and we just wanted to get past it. And it's bullcrap. Had they not announced that reboot, these films would have done much, much better. So this goes to show you what Warner Brothers thinks of the fans and what James Gunn thinks of the fans. James Gunn speaks out on the fan debate over whether Superman should wear his classic red trunks. He said, you wouldn't believe the amount of pleading and upset I get based around trunks or no trunks. To me, not the most important aspect of Superman or his story, but so many strong feelings. So he's saying, I don't care about that part of it. He cares just about the story itself. He doesn't care what the fans want. That's what he's saying. He's go what the fans want. They're just going to do their own thing, guys. He wants to play in his own sandbox. And the way he has mistreated the characters he's been in charge of of DC so far, including the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker characters, none of those characters represent their counter their comic counterparts. And this is how he treats his comic book characters. Over at DC, I do not have hope for the future, especially since he is writing, directing everything that is starting out here. He's writing and directing Creature Commandos, which is in the bag, and he's also writing and directing Superman Legacy. And I guarantee you they're not going to move forward with any more DCU projects until Superman comes out to see what kind of a reception they get. And unless it's the best movie in the year, you could kiss everything else goodbye. Not the movie of the year, but the best movie superhero film ever. He's got large shoes he needs to fill. Now, this is pretty crazy. This is not something I was expecting to see. But Jason Momoa actually clarifies that no one has offered him the role of Lobo in the DCU. 
He says, this is a quote from Jason Momoa. I mean, listen, if they call me and ask me to play him, it's an F yeah. I haven't received that call, so I don't want to put any fake news out there. But if they ever call me, I'm there. So Jason Momoa hasn't been offered the role of Lobo, which is not what the trades have reported and everybody was talking about out here. And it kind of contradicts the video that he posted promoting that something awesome came from Warner Brothers. And is where he called out Maestro and all this other stuff and how he was excited. And he posted that weird video. What did that video actually mean then? Uh, That's some pretty crazy stuff right there. Now, this is interesting. This is Rotten Tomato scores for all the Zack Snyder films. And you can see that Dawn of the Dead is his, is his highest rated only at 76%. Then Zack Snyder's Justice League comes in number two at 72%. Then Army of the Dead at 67 Watchmen at 65 300 at 61 Man of Steel at 56 What in the world? Legends of the Guardians, 52 which I've never even seen that film. Batman vs. Superman, 29%. Rebel Moon, 25%. And Sucker Punch at 22%. Sucker Punch was actually a good movie. I actually enjoyed that. And Rebel Moon... Should be up there in the 70s, I'm telling you guys. Rebel Moon was actually a really good movie. It's not without some flaws, but it was an excellent film. It's just crazy. Uh, People are trying to say, you know, I've been talking about the fraud of Rotten Tomatoes, and they're trying to point to this saying they've given him positive rescores, you know, in the the past with Watchmen, 300, and all those. Those really aren't that positive, guys. I think anything in the 60s, uh, anything below 70 is not good. And so, no, they, they, they generally, the, the critics don't like his stuff. They just never have. Uh, they, and it pained them, I can tell you, it pained them to give Justice League higher than 72 because that would justify that the audience was always right in wanting his stuff and that the fans got what they wanted and were just being spoiled. Uh, that's how the studio has, has kind of labeled it, and, which is ridiculous. So it's just some crazy stuff that came out today. Um, Warner Brothers is not in good shape, and I think they're using the sale to, you know, the the merger as their last-ditch effort before something bad happens with them because their stock continues to drop every day. And I think with Aquaman, they know that Aquaman is going to be a big bomb, and they see the writing on the wall, and things aren't going to get better for their stock. And so they're looking at ways to get out of this potential financial hardship that they're in and because investors are not going to stand for this much longer. All right, guys, there's my DC up for the update for the day. I will be back tomorrow with a Rebel Moon update as well as an update, uh, well, my review for Aquaman. And if there's enough DC news that gets released, I will also have another DC update tomorrow as well. I appreciate all the support. We will see you guys on the next video.